Welcome to Benevent Dental. We're going to take a look at those chain plates under x-ray. Hello, Charles. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. For those of you who didn't know, I'm also a dentist, which is why the channel's called Rigging Doctor. So being how I have access to x-ray equipment, because I have a bunch of x-ray units in my office, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to x-ray the old chain plates and see what was going on in there? So first off, we need to establish what it is that we're looking at. So on an x-ray, black is less dense. So that's where the radiation just passes straight through the air onto the sensor. It shows up as black. White is where there's more material blocking the radiation so less of it gets to the sensor. So it's actually a negative. So if we look at an x-ray of a ballpoint pen, only the metal part shows because that's the part that blocks the radiation. And if we adjust the contrast, you can actually see the ball that's inside the point and the part that goes into the inkwell. Now that is on this pen. So you can see there's a lot of magnification. So dental x-rays are really, really good at finding tiny little cracks. It's how they find stuff in your teeth. So let's look at the other x-rays we took today. So most cracks will happen right around the edge of the hole. That's the part that's under the load because that's where either the bolt or the clevis pin are going through. So the first bolt is the one that tends to have the most cracks happen. Like if you're going to find a crack, it tends to be at the first bolt. So this was why I was looking at the first bolts in particular. So here. It looks pretty good when we adjust the contrast on it. Uh, the metal's uniform. I'm not seeing any cracks jumping out, so we're, we're looking good there. Going to a different one, same thing. The, uh, you can actually see the crystalline structure of the metal in this edge. Like It's really, really cool how uh, exact these x-rays are. So here I was looking at the side. So from the... Uh, first bolt hole over to the side of the chain plate. Like, is there anything nefarious happening in there? And as we adjust it around, you can see everything looks really good in there. Back to looking at the uh, just the fastener hole, looking for bad guys. So as we adjust it, you can see everything looks really good on it. All of them look really, really good. So they're really old. I don't recommend letting your chain plates get as old as ours were, because ours were original on a really old boat. Everything looks really good and, and uniform. All right, now this one, the, the metal right here doesn't look uniform like all the other metal. So that to me is a suspicious area. So I'm glad that we replaced our chain plate because when you adjust the, the exposure, like you can see all the, just the pattern that's in the metal, but then this part here, it's the pattern connects. And I just, I don't like it. The side, middle side of the first bolt hole, and then running all the way out horizontally to the other side. That is very, very common of uh, a crevice corrosion crack forming right at the first bolt, which is where they get their cracks. So I think that our starboard, sorry, our port cap shroud first bolt might have been forming a little crack, but at this stage, it was negligible. It's a thing that you'd notice and then repair by replacing the chain plate like we're doing, but not something that would cause your mask to break right now. Now, if you leave this alone, this is going to break apart, open up completely. You'll be able to see it with your naked eye, and hopefully your mask didn't fall in the process. So this is uh, a little nefarious. But it's a subtle reminder that when they get old, even though they're bigger than they needed to be, they can still break and need to be replaced. Now, this lovely shot is right here. This is the area. So part of the motivation to switch from stainless steel to bronze is that bronze can't get crevice corrosion. At least silicon bronze can't get crevice corrosion. There are other types of bronzes that can get crevice corrosion. So you want to be careful with which one you choose. But if you're going silicon bronze, you don't have to worry about crevice corrosion. You get tarnish, but that's just not pretty. Unless you like the green color, then it's very pretty. The suspect line that we see on the x-ray, it's right here, like this area. 
which when I look at it, I am not seeing it with my eye. So if it is something going on, it's going on deep, like inside, because crevice corrosion is actually a chemical reaction, an electrochemical reaction, more so than uh, classic rust. Crevice corrosion will look like a very fine, tiny little black fracture line running through a chain plate. Uh, it's really hard to see and really, really dangerous because the problem with crevice corrosion is everything looks fine from the outside, but inside it's being eaten away. And when there's not enough left, it just snaps. So that was a huge reason for our decision to switch from stainless steel to bronze because we very easily could have just copied these and made new ones and then been on our merry way. But instead, we've spent months beefing up the hall, getting everything ready, making all the changes that have to go into effect. That way we could switch from internal stainless steel chain plates to external and bronze chain plates. Okay, the next thing we need to do is some extra little finishing touches that we're going to do on the bronze chain plate. So one thing that people do is they put bedding compound in with good intentions, but with bad results. So the problem is if you take two things that fit absolutely perfectly flush together and you bolt them tight, well, they're going to fit perfectly flush together and bolted tight. Now, if you had bedding compound in there, it all squished out because there wasn't any space for it. So then it's going to be paper thin, wafer thin if you like Monty Python. But the problem is it's not in there anymore to act as a bedding compound or a sealant. So it just all got squished out. So what I'm going to be doing is taking a dental drill and drilling a wee little tiny ring right around all of these bolt holes on the side that faces the boat. That way there's space for the butyl to hang out and, and act as a gasket. That way it just seals it up and makes it watertight or hopefully watertight. We're, uh, we're trying to reduce the number of holes and leaks in the boat by switching from six holes in our deck to 18 holes in our top sides. That makes logical sense, doesn't it? Okay guys, we are so close to being finished. We have the bevels cut into the chain plates. That's gonna create a space to make an O-ring out of the bedding material. That way we can properly seal out the seawater so our new chain plates don't leak. Now, what we need to do tomorrow is go pick up all the fasteners that we need. That way we can mount them to the boat firmly, measure what angle the chain plate rests, and then what angle we need to bend the chain plate top to to meet the stay because your chain plate can't come up like this and your stay come down at this angle. That's gonna break. You have to bend the top of the chain plate so that way it meets the stay perfectly. Now, what angle do they need to be? I don't know yet because we can't measure it until we've mounted them firmly. So that's the top priority tomorrow. Get everything mounted, then measure everything, and then we can start bending things. Once we get the chain plates bent, 
Then we can mount them again on the boat, but this time with all the bedding compound. That way it's a permanent installation. That way we can hook up our rigging and be finished with this project. That way we can move on to all the other projects we need to get done before we go cruising this summer. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.